This is Nate Williams for seconds out with Chantel Cameron, WVC World Champion. Does that feel good to hear that phrase before your name? It feels great, but undisputed, undisputed World Champion with Samba. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Um, there's reports going on Twitter that White Wildlands off, Dillian White's got a shoulder injury. Um, are you hopeful that um, the fight will still go ahead and you'll be top of the card now? Um, yeah, I just want the fight to go ahead and not uh, top of the card, I just don't want to fight because I'm prepared and it's going to be a great fight and I've done all the hard work so I'm only a week away so hopefully it still happens. You go against Mary McGee, uh, what do you know about her? Have you met her before? Yeah, I met her in Vegas when I was on the undercard out there defending my WBC world title. Um, a lot of respect for her, great champion, tough, tough opponent and strong as anything. So it's going to be a cracking fight, but I'm prepared for it. I was looking at her record the other night. In the last two fights, she seems to stop people late. So she's a danger, isn't she? Yeah, she's a danger. I'm prepared for that as well. I've got to be switched on. Can't be taking any silly shots, but I feel like I'm very durable. And how, how do you think that fight will go between you? Like, like, do you think you'd start off easy and then it'd become a war in, in the end, like trading blows? Guns blazing. Guns blazing. Yeah, guns. It's not going to start off easy. We, we're, both, we're both quite similar, I think. We're both like, we're hungry champions. We both know what's on the line. And I think we're both just going to start off strong, fast, and go at each other. When you won the world title, obviously it was in, in the pandemic and there wasn't much crowd around, so how, how did it, did it sort of like take away from the occasion a little bit? No, it didn't take away from the occasion because I knew what was on the line, it was the WBC world title, so, so um, I just had to focus on the job at hand and make sure I won that title. And how was defending it in Vegas? How was that? Oh, it was amazing, it was like one of the best experiences of my life so far, it was incredible, I just had a great week out there as well. And coming back here, you, you, in London, on, on the card, fighting in front of your home crowd with a world title, that, that would give you an extra motivation? 100% just with my family and friends there, that's like the, the massive boost that you want, that's about another 20-30%, that's, that's what I live for really, is boxing in front of my family and friends, because it's what I do, I want to make everyone proud. And one thing I wanted to ask you, because I saw um, one of the other champions on the WBA, Callie Reese, she tweeted that she was actually going to come over, so okay. you, you might be getting called out. Got, got to win first, got to win my fight against Mary, and we, whoever wins out of her and Jessica will be in the final with, so it be good to see Callie anyway, I've seen her before. Oh yeah, what, what, what can you tell us about Callie? Great, great boxer, very skilled, good experience, great of a lot. I was looking at her record though, like 18 fights, but she's had like seven losses. So, like, what does that tell you about her character? She's boxed good, good opponents. She boxed good opponents. She's gonna have a few losses. So, uh, she, I think I watched her against Cecilia Brackhouse, and that was a great fight. So, um, records don't mean nothing. What is the goal for you um, in terms of collecting belts? Because obviously, you unify in this fight. Um, obviously, Callie's got a, another belt, so do you want to collect all the belts in this division or do you want to move up and fight Jess Jessica McCaskill? I'm in this tournament, so at the moment, um, hopefully become undisputed, win this tournament, become undisputed. And it depends what my team say, either go down to lightweight or move up a weight, but Jamie and MTK will sort that out. What, so what do you think um, the problem is with moving up in, in weight? I think if you want all them belts, then you've got to go for it. Yeah. Do you, do you not have any problems with like just get, gaining the extra weights in terms of, of no, your movement? Just get stronger. Just get stronger. Got a good so team around harder. me. Yeah, got a good team around me that will make sure I do it properly. What, what do you think about Jessica McCaskill as a fighter? Because she's done very well to uh, become an undisputed champion. Yeah, she's a great fighter. She can whack a bit as well. She's um, what she's done is amazing. Beating Cecilia, beat her in the rematch, and she's got all the belts. Like fair play to her. She's she's living the dream. Going back to your fight, another thing I noticed about um, Mary is that she, uh, one of her losses were against Holly Holm, yeah. a USG fighter. Um, that was a few years ago, so probably couldn't tell you too much, but what have you seen recently about Mary that can give you the edge in this fight? Uh, I'm, I'm preparing for the best Mary. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm doing. I'm preparing for the best Mary. Jamie and Nigel got me prepared and whatever she brings I'm going to have an answer for and I'm going to do better. So, 
So but I've just got to make sure I'm prepared for the very best Mary. I'm sure you will. And I, I also want to ask you about um, GB teammate Savannah Marshall. Um, very well um, defended their title, second round knockout. Yeah. Seems that the Cla Clarissa Shields fight is slowly moving towards. Uh, what did you think of um, Savannah's chances if she does get that fight against Clarissa? Savannah hits so hard. Like She's just destroying her opponent. It's going to be a great fight. Clarissa, Clarissa's obviously a great opponent, great boxer. Um, what she's done for women's boxing is amazing as well. And it's just going to be exciting to watch. So, how do you think that fight goes? I'm going to edge with Savannah. Points? I don't know. Savannah, when she puts that pressure on and she's fit, she's dangerous. When she beat Clarissa um, in the amateurs, were you there? No, I weren't there. You weren't there? No. no but, well, like I say, that, that can sort of give you a mental edge uh, against yes. the fight. Yes. Do you think the amateurs are different to the pros? Like, obviously, that was years ago. There were. There was like, what, 10 years or some ago? But I think uh, Savannah's a better pro. Yeah. It, I think she said that when she turned over. Do you feel like you're a better pro than them? Yeah, amateur? I didn't suit the amateurs. Why not? Just the style. I'm, I'm a better better pro. I can get stuck in more rounds and can sit down on my shots. Um, you've been working with Jamie Moore for quite some time now. Uh, what, what has he uh, taught you in the ring? to box and to calm down a bit, slow down and pace myself a little bit more and be a bit cuter with my boxing instead of going out there guns blazing and just throwing a million one shots that mean nothing. They've learnt me a lot and I think they're, they're improving my boxing ability all, every camp. And what, what has been the main difference between him and working with Shane like you were previously, if, if you can talk about that? <laughs> uh, just so much better, <laughs> so much better, yeah. Do you prefer Manchester down to London? Yeah, Indian? I prefer Manchester. <laughs> Feels like home. Yeah. Um, when you're looking for a new trainer, um, what is the most important thing for you? Because I've seen Anthony Joshua's in the States yeah. and it seems that he's searching for options in terms of new training, right? So what would your advice be to any fighter when, when looking for a new trainer? Don't jump in there. You need to test the waters. You need to see what the gym environment is like and not even just at the gym is the person they have as well and how they can make you feel so for me i didn't just jump in there it was like ongoing for a few weeks i was without even speaking to jamie i was just there looking at cal and how happy cal frampton looked and it was yeah for a while and i was thinking but yeah that, that looks like it's such a good place to train it looks fun it looks a laugh it looks like jamie and nigel actually care about their fires and just looked like the place to be and then um, yeah then a few months after I got in touch with Jamie and I'll come up here but definitely not to just jump in the deep end me personally I didn't go to any other gym like I just come straight to Jamie but um, for me that worked out but for others maybe go around and try out different trainers see who best suited for you but I was very, I was very lucky and I, I landed on my feet when a fighter loses, uh, sometimes it's easy to point to the trainer uh, as the reason for the loss. Um, like I say, when Joshua lost, a lot of people were pointing to Rob McCracken. You, you've seen Rob and how he works. Do you think that's really fair when a trainer gets blamed? I don't think it's fair. I've got a lot of time for Rob McCracken. I was with him on Team GB for years. But um, personally, if I lose, that's down to me. Like, I'm the one in the ring. I'm the one boxing my opponent. And you don't think you should be blaming the coach. Obviously it does have an impact of what's been done in the corner, what's been said in the corner, but at the same time as at this sort of level you should be experienced enough now as well to focus on the job at hand. So there's arguments for and against that, but I don't think you should blame the trainer. And finally, just uh, going to your fight, hopefully uh, all goes ahead next week. Um, what, what do you want to say to people that are going to be supporting you on this journey as you look to unify the uh, world titles? Thanks for supporting me and um, hopefully I'll get these titles and make everyone proud. Thanks Chantal, thanks for your time. Thank you.